Welcome back gentlemen to the shop. In today's video, we are going to try to recreate perfectly a replica of this US Forest Service one gallon white gas lantern can that I just think is the coolest little design. Cool thing is I found every single material used on this exactly in my local hardware store. A near perfect design for its intended task. You know, guys had to pack these things back in the day. This would have been on a pack board. It had to be light and efficient, no wasted space. Perfect, easy to build, lightweight, inexpensive, but built by a carpenter who obviously knew what he was doing. We have Douglas fir right here on the clear, which I found. We have just basically a little a latch hitch or window, whatever, handle for a drawer pull and a couple of window hit hitches or hinges. This would have been probably built in the Forest Service carpenter shop. The side panels are made out of tempered hardboard. I have seen this around. East Coast man, he knows about this. This is what he uses for his countertops when the wife needs a new kitchen remodel. Uh, but I have not worked with this, but it's cheap. Uh, 12 bucks for a four by eight sheet. And obviously it's durable, basically the same stuff. So a great choice for the side panel. CVG fur, clear vertical grain, this stuff, $44 for an eight foot one by six. Goodness, I only use this because I have a sawmill and, and I save, you know, I cut it when I can and save it for this sort of thing. But you can use anything, pine, any sort of one by material that's three quarter inches thick, doesn't matter. Just even pine would be just fine. And the cool part, all the hardware. And that's it. 26 nails, four screws, our latches. Look how close the handle is. We'll put a little glue on here for our final assembly. Gluing a joint makes it very rigid. There's just really no downside to it. These are a real high quality exterior grade deck screw. When you're working with glue, always have a little water on hand. The cleanup is easy now, very difficult later. I've laid out the nailing pattern of the original. We've got five on the side and two. I'm gonna pre-drill this tempered hardboard. It is in really hard and I have a suspicion it will chip or split if we try to drive a nail through it. So this is a 1 16th inch bit, small, really small. My father was a master carpenter and he always taught me to use and make patterns whenever possible. Lay out one time and use that over and over again to transfer marks rather than measuring everything. It saves you hours, hundreds of hours of time. We get it right. So this will be the side profile. There's enough room here for our funnel and a small rag with the lid. You know, just because a box has extra room in it doesn't mean it always has to be filled with stuff. Sometimes it's nice to leave things open uh, for, for poking things in times of need.
To flush up these seams, I'm going to use my bench plane. Just be careful not to get that blade near those screws. I noticed on the original, the carpenter had cut a, a bull nose on these corners. And that's a really good idea that as tough as this hardboard is, the corners are vulnerable to get knocked off. And anything that's gonna be banged around and thrown in the back of a truck or camping, you don't want those hard edges. If we can relieve those, it'll make it last a lot longer. The original box had these inch and a half hinges. Got the same thing at the hardware store, only with Phillips screws instead of regular. I'm taking some creative liberties with the lid. I don't like this lid. I don't see the purpose of the taper, and I like to have an overhang so I can grasp it. There's nothing worse than having a lid that's flush that you're fiddling around trying to grab it. This way you can hook with it. So that overhang is eighth inch and I'll keep the square edges. That's how they made it. Let's see how they stack up here. Pretty much carbon copies of one another apart from some modifications. Now don't feel, don't worry about changing things that, to ways that are maybe better. The old things are not always, you know, best. It's just, it's a place to start. The hinge side and then the tops. Gentlemen, I'm pretty happy with that. I do like the upgrades. I hope this video gets the point across to you how difficult, how much effort, not difficult, but how much effort goes into producing something like this. Once you've worked as a carpenter and done carpentry work, you can never see the world again. You, you see it through different eyes. You see it as, you, you understand what it takes to build, to create, what it, what it takes, the effort that's involved in making something just as simple as a, a, as a gas can holder. It's a lot more difficult to tear everything down when you know what's involved in, in putting it back up. I'm going to do another part to this. We'll, um, we'll do the stenciling and we'll do, do the painting. I'm actually, I, I kind of splurged a little bit. I will be doing the official templing, templing, template, temple making. I bought, I bought a template machine on eBay. I got a, I've wanted one for years. You know, the type that stamps the government issue templates. And I got one of those big ones for a really good price. And it'll do 20, 20 characters, four rows. So we'll be doing some stenciling around here. You're, you're going to want to see that. The, stence, the, the idea I had when I was 
putting this together, and we talked a little bit about the, the fire, firefighting cash system with the wildland firefighting, about uh, it was, it's an ability to warehouse needed equipment and get it to uh, get it to the job or get it to the fire as quickly as possible. And it's really kind of set up in modules, a chainsaw module, um, you know, the Mark Pump series modules that when you order something up, because of the folks at the cache have thought this out and there's 60, 70, 100 years of tradition behind it, they know what's going to take to do that job. And so even if you order this up as a first year firefighter, you'll have everything that you need to do the job. Uh, and many times uh, parts to repair it. And I like that concept and I've been thinking, you know, that's probably what the professional homeowner wants to move into. Why don't we just kind of build on that and I'll be picking out some critical items that I think are critical for, that will give you options and flexibility in the future. Why shouldn't we have something like this where you can grab this and have a chainsaw kit or an ax kit or uh, a lighting kit, you know, and we don't have to limit it to the old technology. Yes, we'll put the old lantern, we'll have that kit, we can grab a gallon of gas, we can grab the lantern. We know we're going to have everything that we're going to need in those two kits. But there's also, uh, we could build on that for modern things, you know, there's going to be needs for communication, radio kits, technology, maybe um, uh, just an all-around charging kit that you can grab and go in the middle of a hurricane or a nightmare and know that you're going to have the things that you need in your red box, meaning Apple or Android or enough to do, you know, whatever you need to do. I like that concept and I think we'll kind of build on that together. Whoops, make sure you remember that latch. We'll do the lantern box next. I ordered a, a lantern in. We're going to kind of compare the old ones to the new ones and this would be a really good set just like the Forest Service would have had it. Gas module, lantern module, and then uh, we'll see how it goes and we'll do the paint and the stenciling on those together. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers. We pray for you constantly and we'll see you all on the next video.